next key area for your revision of the F2 syllabus is investment appraisal. Now, the core topics of investment appraisal, which you need to ensure you go over, are simple and compound interest, discounting, and MPVs, which includes then the internal rate of return, also got annuities and perpetuities, and finally nominal and effective interest rates. So, they are the core areas we're going to focus on, looking at a couple of questions on our discounting and MPV area, as well as our annuities and perpetuities. So, having a look at our first exam question. We are asked then in the question, we need to calculate what is the internal rate of return of the project. So immediately I know then that the most difficult part of this question is probably going to be remembering how I calculate my internal rate of return. So the formula. Having a look then, we're told using an interest rate of 10% per year, the net present value of a project has been correctly calculated as $50. If the interest rate is increased by 1%, the NPV of the project falls by $20. Now remember, to calculate the internal rate of return for a project, we need to know what the net present value of that project is at two different interest rates. So, a reminder then, if we want to calculate the internal rate of return, then it'll be equal to our lower rate plus the net present value at the lower rate divided by the NPV at the lower rate minus the NPV at the higher rate. And multiply that all by the higher rate minus the lower rate. So have we been given this information? Well, yes, we have. In this question, we have been given a lower rate of 10%. And the NPV at that lower rate, we were told, was $50. We've also been given information about our higher rate, so we've been told if the rate is increased by 1%, the NPV falls by $20. So if the NPV goes up by 1% to 11%, the NPV goes down by 20 so it'll be only $30. So this is our lower rate, this is our higher rate, this is the MPV at the lower rate, and this is the MPV at the higher rate. Now, figuring out or remembering the formula, knowing what number is what, that's the difficult bit. Now we've gotten this far, all we have to do is plug the numbers into the formula. So this means that the IRR for this project is the lower rate, 0.1, plus 50 divided by 50 minus 30, all multiplied by the higher rate, 0 0.11, minus the lower rate, 0 0.1. Work that through on your calculators, please. And what do you get? Well, you should get 0 0.125. So we can say that the IRR then is 12.5%. Shall we have a look at our next question? 
So our next question then, we are shown a graph. And we are asked, which of the following is correct with regard to the above graph? Well, what have we been told? The graph gives us the net present value on the y-axis and the interest rate on the x-axis. So for a particular project or investment opportunity, the line is telling us what the NPV is at various different interest rates. Now, what is really being examined here, what the examiner is testing is, do you know that the IRR is the interest rate when the NPV is zero? So if we have a look, which of the following is correct with regard to the above graph? The internal rate of return is 10%. Is that true? Yes, it is. When the NPV is zero, our interest rate is clearly 10%. So that is correct. The NPV at 15% is positive. Well, here's 15%. And we can see that our NPV line is above the x-axis. It's a positive figure somewhere over here. So this statement is correct. Number three, the project's total inflows exceed the total outflows. Well, it depends on the interest rate, doesn't it? So the third statement then is not correct. So, the correct answer then is A. Numbers 1 and 2 are correct. Okay, so that's our internal rate of return. Now, for our final question, we are going to be looking at perpetuities. And this question is quite tricky. So, the question asks us, what would be the value of the annual per perpetuity to the nearest dollar? Okay, so we're told Mr. Manhattan has recently won a competition where he has the choice between receiving $5,000 now or an annual amount forever starting now. So a level perpetuity starting immediately. The interest rate is 8%. So, what is happening for Mr. Manaton is that he is being given $5,000. The only difference here is how he chooses to receive the $5,000. So, he can get one big lump sum now, the, first, the full $5,000, or he can spread the receipt of that $5,000 across a number of years. And what we have to calculate is, if he spreads the receipt across a number of years, then how much does he receive each year? Now, what do we know about perpetuities? We know that the present value of a perpetuity is equal to the annual cash inflow, so the annual amount we receive each year, divided by the interest rate. And I'm just going to take a note below. This applies where the perp begins one year from now. So we're going to receive our first annual cash inflow in exactly one year's time. If that is the case, then we can calculate the present value of the perpetuity using this equation. Now, if Mr. Manhattan chooses to receive this amount as an annual perpetuity, then what is the present value of that perpetuity? Well, either way, he's receiving $5,000. So the present value of the amount he has won is $5,000. Now, establishing that is the first tricky bit, knowing that the $5,000 is the present value of the perpetuity. 
But the next bit's the real catch. So what seems like the obvious thing to do then is say, well, okay, then $5,000 is equal to our annual cash inflow divided by the interest rate. But that would not be correct. This equation is true where the perpetuity begins one year from now. If Mr. Manhattan receives this annual perpetuity, does it begin in one year's time? No. We are told in the question that he would receive an annual amount forever starting right now. So he'd get his first annual cash inflow today and the next one one year from now and so on. So, Let's just suppose then that X is equal to the cash inflow that Mr. Manhattan would receive each year. So X is the value we are trying to find. If we just have a quick look at this on a timeline, in year zero, He's receiving his first cash inflow, that's right now, so he receives X in one year's time. He'll receive the same amount again in year two, in year three, and so on. So what is the present value of these cash flows? The present value of these inflows is the present value of the amount he's going to receive today. Now, the present value of an, amount, of an amount received today is just itself. If we're getting the money right now, we don't have to allow for the time value of money. So the present value of cash inflows is X, the amount he's receiving today, plus the present value of all of the cash inflows he'll receive in the future starting in one year's time. So that'll be the annual cash inflow X divided by the interest rate. Now we've already established that the present value of this perpetuity is $5,000. So then we can say that 5,000 is equal to x plus x divided by 0.8. Now, if we work this equation through, so if we multiply across by 0 0.8, we get 400 is equal to 1.08x. So X, or our annual cash inflow, is $370. So the final thing we have to hope is, is 370 one of the multiple choice answers? And yes, we can see that is answer option A.